In today's tutorial this is week number two of the crochet long and we're gonna learn how to do the actual fingerless gloves that are part of the perfect gift stitch along and this is a really neat look and you can do a pretty good job with these really quickly and we're gonna be using Karen Simply Soft Ombre. Let's start that right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna work on these fingerless gloves just like you see and I just wanna let you know this whole thing right here is an embellishment so it's not functional. It's just something to add a little bit of flair to your glove. The colors that you're seeing today are from the Karen Simply Soft Ombre line. You're not changing colors that comes naturally like this in the ball. We're gonna do some really funky stuff in the wrist area and then progress to the palm as well. So this is a really neat uh, look and idea. You'll need a four and a half millimeter uh, crochet hook today size G and uh, it's just really quick and easy to work on. So let's get started right now. Before we get started on this tutorial you should know that there's really not a left and right on this particular project. You can actually make, see that looks like it is the they're both the same. So it's this embellishment that's on the top of it that makes it left and right. So when we get to do this pattern today you can notice that it's the same pattern. It's just um, a different, um, just the way that it, the embellishment has been added to it. So let's begin row number one of the cuff area. Okay so this is part of the cuff. You'll notice that it appears to be going on an angle. And that's because it is. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna get smaller and we're gonna get bigger. So we're gonna create um, what you can see as a seam line here and you can see that we're gonna create something really quite cool and we're looking for dimensional sizes when it comes to being able to finish this in order to get the right size. So let's uh, begin. So let's create a slip knot and let's follow the instructions as we go. So here we go. Remember that the one on the hook never counts as one and we are to cro uh, chain two. So one and two and it says one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet, second chain from the hook. So just go into the first chain that you started with and just insert in. Okay so we want to insert in, make that a single crochet followed by a chain one and one single crochet into the same one again and that equals three stitches. Okay so you've got to remember that there's a chain one space in between. Let's move up to the next row. Let's turn our work and move up to the next row. So we're gonna chain one and it says to do one single crochet in the first single crochet, no biggie. And then it says to do chain one and one single crochet in the next chain one space. So just pull it apart look for the chain one space that's in between. It's gonna be relatively tight to get it in there but just look for it followed by a chain one and then into the final stitch for a single crochet. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Let's move up to row number three. So let's move up to row number three. So hopefully you're understanding the way that this is being put together because then um, the instructions are gonna get more of more vague because it's gonna assume that you know what you're doing. So we're going to chain one first and one single crochet into the first one. We then chain one and go into the chain one space that's in between. It's easier to see this time. Single crochet, chain one and then we skip over and go to the next chain one space over here. Okay, chain one and then single crochet into the final. So when we go to do this we're playing in between the chain one spaces. Let's move up to row number four. Turn your work, single uh, chain one first and single crochet into the first one. Okay, chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space. So you're skipping over that single crochet over there. Chain one, single crocheting into the next chain one space. Chain one and single crochet into the final. So you get that? So you're just getting more and more stitches as you go. 
and it says to um, do this. So this was row number four. So it says to continue to do this last row until it measures on the straight size about five inches across. Okay, so you're working up uh, directly on an angle. So let me just review again. So if we were continuing along, so you're gonna chain one, single crochet, chain one, go into the ch uh, single crochet into a chain one space, chain one, crochet into the next chain one space, chain one, crochet into the next chain one space, chain one, next chain one space, chain one and then single crochet into the final. You get that? Let me review one more time. I just don't wanna leave anybody behind. So single crochet, single crochet into the first, or chain one, single crochet into the first one, ch uh, chain one, okay. Single crochet into the next chain one space, chain one, skip over to the next chain one space, chain one, single crochet into the next chain one space, chain one, next single cr uh, um, chain one space there, chain one, single crochet into the chain one space, chain one and single crochet into the final. So as per the instructions, so you can see it's growing up on a square. That's exactly what you want. So as per it says, it says it should be about five uh, centimeters across the straight edge. Okay, so it's almost like it's gonna be a square. So let's uh, continue that and I'll meet you back here. So I'm gonna carry on and then we're gonna move on with the rest of this tutorial. So as per the instructions, we're supposed to get a square where the flat sides are about five and a half inches long. Okay, 12 and a half centimeters. And now I'm going to start, it says next row and then next row as per the instructions. So we're gonna start the first one. So it says to chain one and it says one single crochet into the first single crochet. Like so. Okay, and then chain one and one single crochet into the next chain one space all the way down all the way. So we're gonna carry on exactly what we're doing but it's going to change on the very last um, stitches over here. So let me get there first and then I'll see you back there. So just carry along this like you have been to so chain one and single crocheting into the uh, chain one spaces all the way down. Okay, so don't go all the way to the last. Let me uh, show you what you need to do and then we'll carry on in the pattern. Now we're coming up all the way to the end and we want to just carry on until the final two stitches. Okay, so we're just gonna carry on single crochet chain one. So we normally have a, ch uh, a single crochet chain one and then single crochet chain one right into the final single crochet. But the final chain one space we're gonna put two together. So just wrap and pull through, go into the final stitch and pull through and then just with the two, uh, three loops on the hook just pull through everything like that. That concludes that row. So we're now going to turn our work and start up the next row as per the instructions. It says to chain one and two single crochets over the first single crochet in the next chain one space. So coming into the first single crochet and then the next chain one space we're going to um, just go into that space, pull through and then pull through all three loops just like that. And then it says to chain one, skip next single crochet and just move, move all the way down the row like you have been. So chain one, single crochet and the chain one spaces in between. Okay, so now we have to repeat that uh, the last two rows uh, um, two more times. So we're just uh, being able to get it more narrower on the, on the top here and this will make sense as we're working on the pattern. So just carry on and I will see you back here in just a moment. So we're coming up to the end of this row and this row finishes as normal. Okay, so chain one in uh, chain one, single crochet in the chain one space, single crochet in the final. So we're doing all the decreasing on the other side only. So let's turn our work and so this time when we go across we're gonna repeat the first one of next row and we're going to stop a little bit earlier and um, it's gonna be quite easy to do. I think what they're trying to do on this particular pattern is that they're making it longer. So they're making this side finish easier so that this side ends up being longer uh, to wrap around your wrist. I think that's exactly what's happening here. So let's uh, begin again and chain one, single crochet into the first one. So we're doing a decrease on the other side. This is very much like a corner to corner 
um, afghan where we're decreasing on one side and continuing on the other to make it more of a rectangular shape and I think that's what's going on. That's my best guess so far. So carry on and when you get to the final two stitches you're going to wanna decrease then you're gonna wanna start another row where you're decreasing again and then do it once more and then we're gonna carry on for the rest of this pattern uh, for the side seam, okay? So let's uh, continue that and I'll leave that to you to finish and then I'll, I'll be back and we'll start doing the palm area of, your, of the wristers. So I now completed the instructions uh, so you can see it's gotten a flat side here and I've got my flat side here and now to the top. So now as per the instructions we're going to start decreasing on both sides. So this side we've been decreasing by stopping early and doing two together and then we start with two together. So now what we're going to do for the remainder of these instructions is that we're gonna start with the two together on this side end with the two together and then start with the two together and then end with the two together and this is gonna continue to grow up and this will continue to flatten off to making this into a large rectangle. So continue to do that and uh, do that all the way until three stretches, uh, stretches are remaining and it should be the corner that appears like this side but on this side. So we now have our panel and it looks rectangular because we were decreasing on the one side. So what we need to do then is that we need to put the side seams together. So there's two ways of doing it and there's wrong way uh, which I've already just done and I had to pull it apart is that I put the long side, you see it's long and I fold it over. Don't do that. I want you to put it so that the long side is out and then essentially you have to fold it so that the long sides are touching each other like this. If you go the other way what happens is that the um, the wristers are exceptionally long. So if you go this way, okay, that's really long in comparison to your hand and it will not fit as properly as. So you have to go the short ends together and then using the darning needle and the string what we want to do is sew those together. So we just wanna match up the uh, sides. So let's put on our darning needle. like that. Okay, so I just wanna continue just to match it up. Just do a whip stitch so just using your darning needle just whip it across. Do a nice job, just take your time doing it. Like that. Okay, and just work yourself down the shorter edge and just have everything match and when we come back then we'll carry on in this tutorial. Once you're all the way across the right way to finish this off is that you want to insert your needle uh, going in three different directions. So you're gonna insert going in the direction from which you came. Just put it through some fibers. Okay, so that's one. Okay, now go back in the other direction in a different set of fibers for two. And then go back in the other direction in a different set of fibers again for three. The project can never stretch three, uh, three different directions at one time. So therefore this will not fall out like so. Okay, so there you have your wristers and uh, that's what I can see so far. So let's carry on in the project. It looks pretty good. I'm actually pretty proud of that. So let's carry on and uh, let's get some other stuff going on in this project. Let's begin the next part. We're going to do the palm area of your wrister and we're going to join the yarn at the seam line Okay, where you've done the seam and just join it to the top. Whoops, what am I doing with this hook? <laughs> there we go, sorry. And you're going to join it with the, the seam line. Okay, just join. And it says to chain one, so it's chain one. And it says to do 21 single crochets evenly spaced all the way around. So this is where you can kind of customize it for your own hand. Uh, if you have a different size hand, I think that these gloves, uh, for example, they're way too small for me when I really look at it in comparison to, <laughs> in comparison to my Frankenstein <laughs> wrister. But, um, yeah, I must have done something really kind of quick. <laughs> so, um, so, but you know what? This one will never fit me. Okay, so let's, let's be honest about that. So you can uh, do your own Frankenstein uh, kind of gloves. So it says to 21 equally spaced <laughs> single crochets all the way around. I'm going to um, just try my best 
and I'm just going to single crochet around and basically because we have been using single crochets um, the single crochet spaces equal each other. <laughs> so you can just continue to go all the way around just kind of match it up as, as much as you can. Uh, aim for 21 if you're going for the exact size in the pattern but this is where you can kind of use your own creativity. <laughs> but uh, try not to get a Frankenstein uh, wrister at the same time. Okay so just continue to go equally spacing all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. I've equally spaced my single crochets. I'm going to join it um, with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. So we're going to grow the, regardless of your customizing, if you've done exactly what I've done, but it's actually gonna start growing out to compensate for your thumb area. So we're gonna do that next. So in the next uh, row, it says for rows uh, two, to four. So for the next three we're going to chain one and then we're in the first one we're going to put in two single crochets. Okay and then one single crochet into each of the the ones going all the way around. Okay so if, as long as you remember to put in that two in the first one you're good to go. Please do this for rounds two, three and four. Okay rounds two to four are now done and it's growing out a little bit. So you can see that it kind of condensed a little bit which is great. You know that's kind of what you want. So even though my hand uh, wrist is much bigger it's gonna fit me so that's nothing wrong with that. So let's carry on. So for the next seven uh, rounds you're just gonna chain one, one single crochet into each going all the way around. So rounds all the way from five to eleven is just one single crochet into each so this is gonna grow right in this area here. Okay and then we're, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create a hole uh, then for your, your um, four fingers and your thumb to hang out of. So let's uh, continue to do that. So rounds uh, five through eleven just one single crochet into each. Okay so we have round seven to eleven done so you can see it's a lot bigger. And we are now moving to the twelfth round. We have a few more rounds to go. So we are going to start off and we're just going to do one single crochet. So if you're starting as chain one, one single crochet all the way around. Except for the last three stitches we're gonna leave those empty. Okay we're not gonna work those. And uh, I will see you back here in just a moment. Just go all the way around and we'll meet you back at the end of this round where we'll leave some stitches empty. So I'm coming up all the way around and I wanna leave the last three empty and then start the next round. So we're gonna chain three to start the next round and we wanna skip over the three that are already there. Okay so, okay, so we're gonna skip the first three. So, so you're gonna be total, totally skipping six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So go to the seventh if you're doing it the way that I'm showing you here on camera. And what this is doing is it's creating the thumb hole. So your thumb can actually go through there and you're going to go all the way around of this particular pattern. Okay so continue to do that and I will meet you back here in just a moment and I'll show you what to do from that point. So for the final two rounds and coming up all the way around. So when you get to the thumb hole once again remember that you only chain three. So just put in three single crochets right over top of it and then jump to the other side of it and continue to go around for rows number 14 and then uh, round 15 you're just gonna circle again one uh, just single crocheting as normal. So you've already covered your, your thumb hole at that point. So continue to do that and then you're gonna fasten off and we're gonna do the strap really quickly and then you can sew that on. That's just a complete accessory. It's up to you if you want to do that or not and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay once you come all the way back around we're done this particular wrister area and we still have to do the straps at this point. So I wanna do a better job of getting my darning needle and really weaving in this end. This is obviously your hand so you wanna be able to protect it. So let's try my mitt on for the first time. I'm actually liking that this is more looser at this spot. So maybe I did do too bad of a job and then it gets more tighter here at this point. So it's a nice length that will go up my uh, my um, um, sleeve of my coat and it's got a nice tight fit here and it looks really good. It actually matches the knuckles. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's do the um, strap next and it just goes on the top. It's just more for show. 
So let's quickly review the strap. It's just a very quick uh, um, line basically of a, of a chain and then just going all the way around the chain and then you can see where it's being applied. So even if you have a different size uh, mid. So if I want for example this to be the, the left side or the right side depending what video you're looking at um, you just have to apply the strap to the whatever side that you want. So Okay, so if I applied it to there then they would match each other. So let's do the strap next using the same color of yarn. Okay, so we need to make two straps and then you'll just sew them together. The button is obviously an accessory that you can add to it if you wish. And let's uh, chain um, 11. So 11, so never, this never counts as one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, and 11. Second chain from the hook it says is to one single crochet each until each all the way to the end. So I'm just going on the back hump only. It does a nicer finish especially with this kind of high exposure area. The people are gonna be able to notice this. So I'm single crocheting into each one. Um, I just pulled the yarn from the ball like wherever it, where, wherever it was in the ball. I didn't wasn't really too concerned with color. Again that's a complete choice that's up to you. If you're trying to match your flower uh, that there that the set has with the scarf and the headband then you can use um, the flower color I guess too. Once you get all the way to the end you are going to chain three. So one uh, sorry um, you're going to last chain and then on the last one you are going to do three single crochets. So I've already done one. So you're gonna do two and three. And I'm turning around the chain so now I'm working on the chain on the upside down level and I'm gonna come out across on the on the bottom side. Okay so I just continued to turn the ch turn the chain so I'm now working down the other side. And uh, it's an easy effect it's just complete this is completely accessible an accessory. Sorry I'm slipping up on my words. I've been filming 10 hours today. Okay so let's continue to go along and right at the very last one you just want one single crochet and then fasten off at this point and you were just gonna use this piece and just sew it to the top of there. So if I just fasten this off real quick use your darning needle to really hide in those loose ends and really get it in. So when you get your glove back or your wrister back up you can just obviously just go wrong along the top and it looks like a really cool effect. Obviously if you change the size of your um, glove you can make this longer. The only thing you need to do is just chain more and so instead of 11 you could done 13 or 15. Um, you could go all the way around too if you wanted to and basically the creativity is up to you. So this is how you would do um, a glove at Wristers. This is for the perfect gift stitch along for yarnspirations.com. Thank you so much for joining me today and I really actually really like my mitt. My sizing is way off but um, at the end of the day I'd rather it be a little bit looser anyway. And then I can apply that right there. Okay so until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a fabulous day everybody. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.